derived distribution, distribution of a continuous random variable. So we are having a con first one is a continuous random variable, first defined continuous random variable. It is a map from uh, omega to omega x. In such a way, omega x is now a continuous state. Such that omega x is a continuous state. Okay, that means what does it mean? You are unable to write omega x in term of a single sequence. In term of a single sequence, that that means random numbers those appears happens to be continuum in nature. You are unable to write in a single sequence form. Okay. Now the second you, we are defining function of a continuous random variable. So that we call it y equal to g of x g of capital X. Okay. So, can you say that if you are defining function of a continuous con function over a continuous set, so that function uh, will be always a continuous kind of thing or maybe a discrete thing? That means some uh, discrete value it will take. Discrete thing means discrete value or countable value. So, if you are defining a function over a uh, continuous set, then the range is always a continuous set or maybe a discrete set. Just I am asking question from all of you. Any idea that if you are taking a, uh, suppose you are defining a function from interval, from an interval 0, 1 to r, then that function would be always the range of that function would be always a continuous state or maybe a discrete state. Have you seen that uh, one example I had uh, discussed sign kind of thing. Also I had discussed uh, partition binary that means if you are defining a function from uh, close interval 0 1 uh, to r is such a, such that uh, points are bifurcated in uh, points which are less than 0.5 and points which are greater than 0.5. So there would be a so point which are less than 0.5 will take value 0 and point which are having greater than 0.5 will take value 1. 1. So 0, 1 classification or uh, you, you are observing that. So that means range of uh, a function having continuous domain may have discrete range or may have continuous range. So, so here when you are talking about, uh, so it is a definitely a function g of uh, x, it would be a function from omega to omega y. So, we always can't claim that y would be a continuous random variable. Okay. So, depends upon two scenario. When omega y is a discrete set, we will call y is a discrete random variable. If it is a discrete set, in short ds I am writing it, then we will call y is a discrete random variable y, and it will have a probability mass function. y is a discrete random variable. Okay, discrete, why is discrete random variable? If uh, the omega y happens to be a continuous set, then we will say that y is a continuous random variable. Y would be a continuous random variable. Okay, so again same situation will come here. If despite of x is a continuous random variable, uh, the function of x may be a discrete or continuous random variable, depend upon the situation. If we, uh, y is a discrete set, we will talk about probability mass function. If y is a uh, continuous random variable, then we will talk about probability density function, same situation all these. So this uh, and the corresponding, so if you, in this case we will have a uh, probability, derived probability mass function that will denote it by uh, p suffix y of small y. Okay, and if y is a continuous random variable, then here we will come up with probability density function f suffix y of a small y as a limiting value of probability per unit length. Okay, so these things uh, we have actually we had already discussed about continuous random variable and various things you can borrow it from all these for derivation of p of y and p of f of y. 
P of y, f of y. Now, here I will talk about few example of uh, uh, derived continuous random variable, few example. So, one example uh, when we are having that situation, then we have to talk about to compute probability distribution function or, and uh, or probability mass function or probability density function depends upon the nature of y. Okay. So, what is the starting point? How you will find those uh, derived distribution? So, it is approach is here. You have to uh, proceed with a cumulative distribution function. It is very easy to define for uh, y, the derived random variable. So, how you will define? See, see the pattern how it is defined. So, we are defining the uh, cumulative distribution function for y. That means capital F of y. It is specifically for cumulative distribution function. So, capital F of y, it is talking about probability that y is observing value up to y, small y, up to a small y. Okay. So, here I have not mentioned that y is discrete or continuous. I have not mentioned here. Okay. We will see it the, uh, based on the nature of y or based on the nature of g. We will see it. So, uh, how will, so y simply will replace it by g of x. Why? Because y is a function of x. So, that is why we are replacing it probability that g of x is observing value up to a small y. This one is uh, at, at the time it is fixed, a small y. Okay. Now, then you can further uh, go to talk about what, what is this probability through inverse map. You can say that probability that x is observing value up to inverse image of y. That means you have to sum the all probability mass function of x which are mapped to a small y. So, what is this one? This one is talking about as formula, uh, if it is a continuous random variable, how you will compute probability that x is observing value up to x? Up to uh, x, x is here g inverse of y. If it is, uh, suppose here x, here x is continuous. So, how you will compute it? By integrating. Probability up to x, how we compute in case of a continuous random variable? By integrating. So, integration would be from where to where? Minus infinity to it will go from minus infinity up to what value? G inverse of y. That means all the inverse image of y, which that means all those points which are mapped to y. So, we will call it G inverse of y. Of what function we will integrate? The density function. of x. The density function times d of x, we call it probability uh, in an interval of length d of x. So, it is also you can relate to it in the total probability also. Okay. So, like that. So, this you are you can compute it like this way. So, if, uh, uh, if you are computing like this way and this integrable is solvable explicitly, that means you are getting explicit form of that and definitely it would be function of y now. We are taking limit with respect to uh, in term of y, g inverse of y. So, it would be uh, function of y. So, that we call it h of y. So, uh, I mean, I say that when you are computing uh, cumulative distribution function of y as an explicit function of y, then by di differentiating this one, you will get probability density function of y. You will get a probability. So, what is the relation between uh, uh, CDF and PDF of continuous random variable. CDF, you had already seen that you got it by integrating, then integrating a PDF. Then how you will get PDF? P by differentiating. That means uh, the integration and differentiation uh, both are in ideal situation happens to be inverse to each other. If you are integrating uh, a function, you are getting integra integral, then you have to differentiate in order to get it back. Okay, so the integral, get it back integral, integrant, okay, get it back integral. So, uh, PDF would be what? Derivative of cumulative distribution function. So, you are willing to compute, if you are, you have already computed CDF of y as an explicit function, H of y, some explicit function, like ex what is meaning of explicit function, like I am saying y square, it is an explicit function, like it is for y, it is an explicit function. If some function which is not able to express in explicit form, then we will call it implicit function. It is very difficult. That, that means integration from 0 to y of e to the power minus t square in 
uh, with respect to t, dt, we will write. So whether we are getting any explicit form there, there is no explicit form for e to the power minus t square. If you are integrating it, there is no explicit form. So that would be in implicit form. We will say that it is coming implicitly. So that uh, that uh, that time CDF would be defined in term of implicit form. So so such situation may also arrive arise. Okay. So this one is the situation when in approach one when you are getting CDF in the of derived random variable y in explicit form h of y differentiate it, then you will get uh, PDF of y. So this PG, PDF of y. Okay. Another approach is that when CDF is not uh, uh, defined explicitly it is defined implicitly then what you have to do you have to apply chain rule here so up to this uh, computation is same up to this computation is same okay so pro, uh, pro cdf of y it is defined property that y is observable up to uh, x then it would be y is what g of x so you will say that property that g of x is observable up to x that means property that x is observable up to inverse image of y no, never call it inverse of y what you will call inverse image of y. Probability that x is observing value uh, up to inverse image of y. Okay. What does it mean? So it is uh, now defined in term of CDF of x. This one is defined CDF of y. Y is involved. But here it is talking about probability that x is observing, observing value up to this quantity, inverse image of y. So this would be CDF of x. We call it, it is defining CDF of x. CDF of x. So CDF of y we have written in term of CDF of x. This one is defined as CDF of y. This we call it. Why we are able to write uh, CDF of y in term of CDF of x? Because y is a function of x. So that's why we are able to write. It is CDF of y. Okay. So uh, what is what is the argument? This is the so CDF of x with this argument g inverse of inverse image of y, inverse image of y. Okay. So what does it here f capital F x? It happens to be function of x, but we observe here some other kind of x is expressed as a function of y. Here this one is this argument is x, but x is not directly written it here x is written here in implicit way it is a function of y so if that situation is there then if you are willing to find the derivative of the capital f x in term of x what you have to go you have to apply chain rule so how you apply first you in the inner mode innermost argument is y so you are willing to differentiate this one with respect to actually uh, you are willing to find uh, cdf of y and it is coming like this way. The innermost argument is y. So overall, it is a function of y, but it is defined implicitly. It is defined implicitly in the function of y. And you, you are willing to find derivative of this one in order to find probability density function of y. So what you have to do, uh, do? First, you differentiate this function, this function with respect to y, uh, that uh, this uh, argument, the local argument, uh, inverse image of y, differentiate with respect to y then differentiate further uh, inverse image of y with respect to y because how you will get uh, pdf from cdf of y by differentiating PD, cdf of y with respect to y then you will get pdf of y okay so but here you observe that this argument is not in explicit form of y it is g inverse of uh, y uh, inverse image of y. So first you have to locally integrate with respect to this y through chain rule. It is coming like this way. And we also know that uh, PDF is always greater than or equal to 0. So the inverse image of y may be a decreasing function of y or may be increasing function of y. If it is a de decreasing function of y, what does it mean? Derivative would be what? If, it is a, if you are taking a decreasing function, what would be derivative? Less than? Zero, negative simply call it negative and if it is increasing then um, uh, positive derivative so uh, but we know that one term we got it here like this way okay this would be definitely uh, the cdf happens to be always a probability would be greater than equal to zero we are differentiating a positive function with respect to the inner uh, uh, this argument g 
जी इनवर्स ऑफ वाई बट वॉट अबाउट इनवर्स इमेज ऑफ वाई इट मे बी डिक्रीजिंग और इंक्रीजिंग सो बेस्ड ऑन सो इट मे बी नेगेटिव और पॉजिटिव सो वी हैव टू पुट मॉडुलर्स हेयर बिकॉज डेंसिटी विल बी ऑलवेज ग्रेटर दैन इक्वल टू जीरो सो वी हैव टू पुट इट मॉडुलर्स ओके देर आर अदर वे टू सिंप्लीफाइड सो इफ यू डिफ्रेंशिएट सी डी एफ हेयर वी आर डिफ्रेंसिंग सी डी एफ ऑफ एक्स सो इफ यू आर डिफ्रेंसिएटिंग सी डी एफ ऑफ एक्स देन यू विल गेट पी डी एफ ऑफ एक्स विथ दिस आर्ग्यूमेंट एंड दिस इज वी कॉल इट जेकोबियन जेकोबियन दैट डेरबेटी ऑफ वाई डेरबेटी ऑफ इनवर्स इमेज ऑफ वाई विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू वाई दैट वी कॉल इट जेकोबियन ऑफ द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन जेकोबियन ऑफ द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ओके so we call it so you can so, simply call it like say so so there are two way to compute this one is one and one approach this one is the direct approach this one is implicit approach okay and the second approach would be much more common generally you will not get a specific form of the cd of y so that's way now one example i am taking it here so x is a continuous random variable which is distributed uniformly in the interval 0 to 1 okay then we are defining y as a function of x that we call it a square root of x a square root of x so uh, y is a function of x so we know that first you have to know that what are the possible value that y will observe x is observing value be between 0 to 1 then y will also observe value if you do a square root of that what is the range of a square root of function when x is taking value between 0 to 1 domain is 0 to 1 the what would be the range that range would be also 0 to 1 so if x is if x is observing value between 0 to 1 then y will also observe value between 0 to 1 so that that first uh, that you need to know what are, what are the possible value or what are the possible random numbers that you not need to talk, uh, need to compute it by implicitly directly you can compute it there is no uh, uh, otherwise you can leave it there is no any issue main thing is that you have to find the pdf of y how you will find the pdf of y so pdf of y in order to compute it first you have to compute cdf of y so cdf of y it is defined as a property that y is observing value up to small y now but y is what it is a function of x as a square root of x so we are writing a property that a square root of x is observing value up to a small y now do little bit algebra here if you solve in this inequality what you will get property that x is observing value up to up to y square and Uh, what is the so this one is talking about cdf of x it is it is saying that property that x is observing value as up to a small uh, y square that means it is saying that cdf of x with argument y square with argument up to x this one is the up, up to x in place of x we are having y square so we are having cdf of x with argument y square how we compute uh, cdf from the given pdf by integrating the pdf from minus infinity to that point x in place of x we are having y square so you have to integrate from minus infinity to y square but we know that it is a uniform random variable defined over 0 to 1 that means density is 0 before 0 up to when x is less than 0 what is density 0 so we don't have to bother about that segment also density is zero when x is greater than 1 so don't we have to do, don't we don't have to bother about so just integrate from 0 to y square we are computing uh, cdf of x at y square so you, you integrate from 0 to y square what is the integral of this one what is the density dens uh, for uniform random variable what is the density here the given uh, uniform random variable density is 1 when x is observing value between 0 to 1 and it is zero when outside 0 to 1 simply it is what is meaning of uniform uh, uniformly distributed random variable over the interval 0 1 so density directly you need to write it now so what is the density i had already discussed what would be that 1 by b minus a so b is equal to 1 a equal to 0 so 1 minus 1 is 1 minus 0 is 1 so density is it is coming like this way it, it is taking value 1 when x is between 0 1 and otherwise it will take value 0 so that's why you are integrating one function from 0 to so easily you got cdf of y is y square so what would be pdf of y 2y just differentiate it get the pdf of y so this one is 2y and you can verify that this one is a legitimate pdf over the interval 0 to 1 it is a legitimate pdf 
it is satisfying all the properties okay you can verify it is satisfying all the properties okay now alternative way you can compute it like this way the alternative approach that that means you are not going to compute cdf of y explicitly you will leave it you do, you are okay so you are coming it like this way so uh, you are computing cdf of y as a probability that y is of general value up to a small y that means y is what g of x and uh, uh, you will write it uh, here uh, probability that x is of, of general value up to g inverse of y and here g is what a square root function no? g is what a square root function a square so i am writing how will write it a square root Okay. So here, uh, what would be g inverse of uh, y? Sorry, here what is the inverse image of y? It would be y square. Simply, it is coming like y square. We are not going to compute it explicitly. So we will just uh, stop here. And after that, what we are willing to find density of probability density function of y. So how we will find? So we have to differentiate this function with respect to y. So we know that it is a function of x, but argument is coming y square, and we are willing to differentiate this one. Overall, argument is y. So we are willing to differentiate in order to get density of y. So we, uh, here we have to apply chain rule. So first differentiate this one with respect to y square, the local argument. Then uh, differentiate y square with respect to y. So what is the derivative of uh, this one? Derivative. What is the derivative of? Uh, a, Uniformly distributed random variable over interval 0, 1. It is PDF. PDF. And what is the PDF of a uniformly distributed uh, continuous random variable over 0, 1? That one PDF is 1. It is 1. So that means it is directly giving PDF of x. That one is equal to 1. And what is the derivative of y square with respect to y? 2y. So this one is the Jacobian factor. So Jacobian factor is contributing in the PDF of y. So this is the second approach. You can go for first approach or second, whichever you find easier. Now I'm talking another problem. Like everyone might be aware of the relation between distance and speed. So John is driving uh, from Boston to New York area, a distance of 180 miles. His average speed is distributed uniformly from 30 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour. Okay, a speed is given uniformly distributed. Then you have to find the uh, PDF of the duration of the trip that means time you have to find the pdf of time so what is the relation between uh, uh, a speed and time time is equal to distance by a speed distance is 180 miles so 180 divided by x x we suppose uh, it is the speed and it is uniformly distributed so we are willing to find density of y how you'll find the density of y the same approach uh, the density of CDF of y, it would be probably that y is of general value up to a small y. And what is y? y is written in term of 180 by x. So 180 by x, probably that 180 by x is less than or equal to a small y. And if you uh, do little bit uh, algebra, then you express here in term of x. So it is equal to probably that x is of general value greater than or equal to 180 by y. And what does it talk about? It is talking about probability of right tail. So here you know that call suppose this point is y and so there are two things here. So when you say that probability that y is object value a small y, one quantity, okay. So what is this segment probability? What is the, uh, this segment probability? It is saying probability up to a small y. Probability up to so that one is the CDF. Overall probability would be the largest value of probability, uh, CDF is what one? It is one. It is varying from zero to one. So it is saying that capital F suffix y. Okay. If you talk about this event is this side event, what we call it? It is saying that this event we call it y is of general value a small y up to y. Then what is the name of this side event? 
what is the name of this anyway it is complement of y is observed value up to a small y it is complement are you getting meaning of complement or not so it is complement that means com y is greater than y a small sorry capital y is greater than a small y capital y is greater than a small y what is this one this one is complement of y is less than equal to a small y so how you will compute probability of capital uh, y greater than uh, a small y this one is complement probability of a an event an element uh, probability of an event plus probability of complement of that event that happens to be equal to 1 so what is the probability of this complement event 1 minus probability that is probability that y is observed value up to a small y 1 minus so like that, that's way this one is what complement event okay what is the probability of this complement event 1 minus probability of the event that is the concept here so it, it would be this probability that it would be equal to 1 minus probability that x is observed value up to 180 by y okay so it is uh, talking about uh, cdf at point 180 by y so 1 minus cdf at point uh, now what we do in order to compute pdf of y differentiate this one different with respect to y so if you uh, differentiate to 1 what is the derivative of 1 0 so that one is not contributing here what is the derivative of this first you have to differentiate this one with respect to 180 by y and that means it, it will give density of x what is the density of x 1 and then you have to differentiate 180 by y with respect to y what is the derivative of this one y square minus will also come there so mod we are having here in order to make it positive so what is our desired uh, density of y after simplification you get 6 by y square okay this is the better approach to compute uh, pdf of function of a continuous random variable okay so uh, other random variable happens to be uh, gamma distribution gamma distribution is actually generalization of exponential distribution what we had already discussed exponential distribution is having pdf uh, lambda into e to the power minus lambda x here in place of lambda lambda is already there apart from that we are coming with gamma function gamma function you might have already seen in plus two gamma function is defined as a it is just generalization of a factorial function what you had already seen that factorial is defined for positive integers okay then if you generalize factorial for real numbers then that that we call it gamma function so here this is the gamma function it is uh, in improper integral from 0 to infinity e to the power minus t t to the power alpha minus 1 dt we are integrating with respect to t okay from 0 to infinity and this would be it is generalized factorial you can call it gamma function is generalized factorial so this gamma function is coming so gamma distribution it, it is a it is generalization of uh, what we call it uh, exponential random variable and if you talk about uh, various scenario these are the various scenario for various value of alpha and gamma two parameter are coming alpha and gamma and uh, uh, you had already seen uh, actually we haven't uh, you had already seen uh, uh, mean and variance of geometric random variable it was what was the mean 1 by p and variance was minus uh, 1 minus p divided by p square you might have already seen that okay likewise uh, exponential is just uh, what uh, uh, continuous counterpart of geometric random variable exponential random variable will have mean uh, 1 by lambda or uh, exponential and, and variance 1 by lambda square like in the geometric p square you had here you will see that now you are coming with gamma distribution one gamma factor is coming here so here uh, expectation of gamma distribution would be alpha by lambda and variance would be alpha by lambda square so this one is mean and variance through same formula you can compute and there are various scenario if you are taking alpha equal to 1 it is just it is a gamma distribution if you are taking alpha equal to 1 it becomes what is the gamma function it is talking about factorial of 0 factorial alpha equal sorry value of gamma function when alpha is uh, integer it becomes factorial of alpha minus 1 if alpha equal to 1 then you will get factorial of 1 minus 1 that 0 what is the factorial of 0 
1 so that's that's where your factorial of 1 it would it becomes 1 so lambda into e to the power minus lambda x so if when alpha is equal to 1 uh, the gamma distribution becomes exponential distribution exponential distribution and there are various other cases uh, you can talk about all these cases there are and these are all uh, these are very kind of, in application later you will come to know and now uh, from the gamma distribution you can generate you can derive a beta distribution what is beta distribution simply here coefficient function is coming as a in term of uh, reciprocal of beta function this one is 1 by beta function it is 1 by beta function it is coming beta function is defined uh, having two argument alpha and beta it is defined as ratio of uh, gamma function of alpha into gamma function of beta divided by gamma function of alpha plus beta and integral it is defined like this way these are very specific kind of uh, integral and if you talk about uh, when you are getting uh, beta distribution uh, uh, when you take a gamma distribution x1 another gamma distribution x2 and you define x1 divided by x1 plus x2 and then this uh, new function will have a new distribution that distribution we call it beta distribution x1 is having gamma distribution or uh, you hear here lambda equal to 1 and alpha equal to alpha and in x2 is another gamma distribution here alpha in place of alpha we have taken beta and lambda equal uh, lambda equal to 1. So, if you are taking two different gamma distribution, uh, gamma random variable and define uh, this ratio, then this ratio will have a beta distribution. And uh, expectation and variance are very simple to compute, it, it is not complicated kind of thing. Okay. And if you are trying to see various exam, uh, example of beta distribution for various value of alpha and beta, you can see all these zigzag kind of things. And uh, this one is the static picture. And if you are willing to see dynamic picture, you can see it like it is changing a lot. Sometimes, what is why we are coming for all this beta distribution and gamma distribution? Actually, gamma distribution is generalization of uh, exponential distribution. And beta is generalization of all over uh, all kind of uh, continuous distribution. All kind of continuous. So we try to give a single notation. So for all possible changes of alpha and beta, you will get all possible continuous distribution. So you can see that this dynamic picture, you can see that uh, this file is GIF file, you can find it. Okay, and these are the CDF. CDF will always try to uh, uh, touch to uh, one, probability one. These, these are the possible CDF. Okay, uh, now, expected value rule, at least, should we, do we have time? Okay, uh, we are having time. Uh, so, expected value rule for a continuous random variable, it is just in, implied from expected value rule for uh, discrete random variable. So, if you are having a y as a function of x, then how you will compute uh, the expectation of y? You will compute as a as per definition. This one is as per definition. That means uh, it is what weighted integral of y. The weight is provided by density of y. Density of y. Okay, weighted in the weight is provided by density of y. You know, you know that this uh, time this it becomes probability. Now, if you simplify further, it will come as integral uh, g of x. If you uh, write y is what, each given y happens to be function of x, function, function of some x. Okay, so if you write y g of x, the correspondingly uh, with respect to all those inverse images, y will sum up to uh, and uh, it will uh, collectively give density of x. Okay, uh, it will, so overall this one is what, uh, this we call it aspected, uh, so uh, collectively all those uh, inverse images of x will give density, the density of y, it will give density of y and if you simplify this integral simply, that means and uh, it will just take aspected variable g of x time density of x, you are not uh, going for density of y, you are just writing density of x, you don't need to compute density of y. Directly, this rule we call it expected value rule. Derivation, if you are willing to see it uh, in a very explicit way, it is similar to what we had already seen derived distribution. Uh, derived distribution, uh, sorry, expected value rule for uh, discrete random variable. Similar in the similar fashion, we can see. Okay, so uh, here there are two way of finding expectation. One is through direct formula of expectation or definition of expectation. Another way, this we call it expected value rule. This we call it expected value. Okay, this we call it aspected value rule. Okay, so one example I will take it here. So x is uniformly distributed random variable from zero to one, 
and we define a function y as a function of x such that when x is between uh, 0 to 1 by 3, y is taking value 1. When x is between 1 by 3 to 1, then y is taking 2. So clearly, what is omega y? It is a discrete set having two, just two values, uh, 1 and 2. So y is a discrete random variable. x is a continuous random variable, y is a discrete random variable. So here, the y will have a probability mass function, not a probability density function. Why? Because y is a discrete random variable. So it will have a probability mass function. So we are willing to compute uh, uh, here expectation of y. So if you are willing to compute expectation of y, first you have to compute the probability mass function of y. So what is the, uh, what are the value of y is observing? Either 1 or 2. So you have to compute probability that y is observing value 1. What is the probability that y is observing value 1? So that, that means probability that y is observing, observing value 1. So here y is what? Uh, when y will observe value 1? When x is taking value up to 1 by 3. What is the probability that x is uh, taking value up to 1 by 3? It is 1 by 3, uniform distribution. Uh, as per uh, uh, CDF of y, it would be 1 by 3. And likewise, if you compute uh, uh, probability mass function at 2, that means probability that y is observing value 2, it will say that when you, y is observing value 2, when x is between 1 by 3 and 1. And for that, what is the probability? 1 minus 1 by 3. That one is 2 by 3. So probability of uh, uh, y is observed value 2, it is 2 by 3. You got probability mass function of y. So how, what is the expectation? Value of y, weighted, it is weighted sum of value of y. Weight is provided by corresponding probability mass function. So 1 into 1 by 3 plus 2 into 2 by 3. The, so this expectation, you got it through definition of expectation of y. Okay. The another approach is that you go, you can get it through expected value rule. Here, you don't have to compute distribution of y. What you have to do? Take distribution of x. Enough. So here, x is continuous random variable. So by default, integral will come here. Here, you can see that your summation you observe. Here, but here, what you observe? You will write g of x times density of x. And density of x, uh, it is coming with respect to x. That one is a continuous random variable. Okay. So uh, here, uh, you see that there is a change in uh, y due to uh, variation of x uh, from one, 0 to 1 by 3 and 1 by 3 to 1. There are two different changes. Na, changes. So that's why we will uh, bifurcate this integral in two parts, 0 to 1 by 3 and 1 by uh, 3 to 1. 0 to 1 by 3, what is the density? Uh, so what is the value of g of x? It is 1. And density is 1. 1 into 1, 1. So we are just integrating function 1 from 0 to 1 by 3. And now, uh, from 1 by uh, 3 to 1, what is the value of y? What is value of g of x? 2. And what is the value of density? 1. 2 into 1 is 2. And 2 is a constant. It will come out. So just we are integrating one unit function from 1 by 3 to 1. So what is the integral? 1 by 3 plus 4 by 3. And finally, you got the same value. There are two different approaches. Okay. Second one is the expected value rule. It is more generalized one. Okay. Now, uh, if you talk about characterization uh, further and further application of normal distribution, it is very much useful in computing uh, probability when distribution is unknown to you. So we will talk about that. So uh, before uh, that, we had already discussed about uh, uh, normal distribution having, so generally we a normal distribution having mean mu and variance sigma square, we denote it by n mu comma sigma square. This one is the short notation of normal distribution. Okay. And if mean mu is equal to one, 0 and variance is equal to uh, sigma square 1, sigma square equal to 1, then that normal random variable we call it a standard normal random variable. If uh, mu, yeah, uh, if mu equal to 0 and sigma square equal to 1 and that ran normal random variable we call it uh, a standard normal random variable and a standard no normal random variable we denote it by z. We say that z is a, a standard normal random variable having uh, normally distributed having mean 0 and variance 1. Don't say sig sigma is 1. Sigma that one is a standard, we, a square root of variance we call it a standard deviation. Okay. So uh, this one is, this one is a standard normal distribution. Okay. And if you are having any normal distribution, 
you can always uh, transform that normal distribution into a standard normal distribution. How? By deviating the random normal random variable by mean and dividing by a standard deviation. Dividing by a standard deviation. So if x is any normal random variable with mean mu and variance sigma square and in that random variable if you do this kind of deviation and transformation the resultant would be a standard normal random variable. You can find it here expectation of what would be expectation of z? You can see it here. Expectation of x is mu and z is defined as x minus mu divided by sigma square and sigma is what? It is one kind of, uh, it is there is no randomness. Sigma is one kind of expected value and mu is also one kind of expected value. So those are determination things. There is no randomness. Okay. So those will simply come out of the expectation when you are applying expectation. So expectation of uh, uh, z or expectation of x minus mu divided by sigma. What does it would be? x minus mu divided by sigma. What would be this? So 1 by sigma is here, it is non-random. That means it is deterministic. So it will come out. So you will have 1 by sigma. Now, expectation is a linear operator. I had told that you can take a expectation inside the bracket. What would be? It would be expectation of x. And what is the expectation of mu? Anyone? What is the expectation of mu? Mu is what? Determination number? So expectation of, uh, if I am saying the, what is the expectation or average of a deterministic number? That means 2. What is the number? What is the expectation of 2? A number 2. It will 2 itself. So what is the expectation of mu? Mu itself. Okay. So it would be here. What? expectation of x minus expectation of mu is mu itself. And what is the expectation of x? What is the expectation of x? x is a normally random variable with mean mu. So expectation of x is mu. So here what we will have? 1 by sigma into here in the numerator we will have mu minus mu. What is the value of mu minus mu? 0. So we have computed that uh, if you are having a normal random variable x with mean mu and variance sigma square, then if you define a new uh, function x minus mu divided by sigma, it will have mean 0 and variance 1. Variance also you can prove second result as well. So that you can write it, if you simplify this one, then you can say that x can be written as sigma times z plus mu. That means x is a linear function of a standard normal random variable z. This one is a linear function. Okay, linear function, simply we say that. And if you are talking about uh, a standard normal random variable z, it is having a distribution 1 by a square root of 2 pi. This is just a normalizing constant uh, into e to the power z square by 2. e to the power z square by 2 minus z square by 2. This is the protein density function of a standard normal random variable. And what is the CDF? CDF, when you are getting CDF, uh, cumulative distribution function, you have to integrate up to x. Probably that, this one is saying that probability of uh, a standard normal random variable, it is taking value up to a small x. Z is taking value up to a small x. That means you have to integrate the density up to a small x. Integrate this one, this minus infinity up to a small x. Then the CDF of uh, a standard normal random variable, we denote it by phi of x. And in the normal table, the value of CDF is given. When you will get normal table somewhere else, CDF of this one would be given. So a standard normal variable, it is very much useful. And this is the plot of a standard normal, PDF of a standard normal random variable. You can say that here the mean is 0 and variance is 1. And you can see that it is symmetric about origin. Why? Origin is the mean. And this is the plot of PDF of a small ascended normal random variable. And if you talk about what is the CDF, CDF of this ascended normal random variable, so it will come like sigmoid structure. It is coming like that and it will touch uh, the probability one. It will touch that. So at which point it is cutting the vertical axis? 0.5.
when it is cutting so this is uh, uh, along the vertical axis probability is coming so here probability is zero when x is taking value uh, very uh, small uh, min uh, near to minus infinity then it, what is the probability after that it would be very near to zero so that's why it is touching zero and when it, x is very large that means what is the probability it is approximately equal to one so this is this s structure sigmoid structure what we call it so this is the pdf plot of f capital f this one this one is plot of capital f this one is plot of a small f okay this one is all about a standard normal random variable just i will do one example one or two example then we will finish this lecture so here uh, further motivation of a standard random a standard normal random variable is that when p is a small and n is large we had already seen that uh, that poisson distribution is a good approximation of binomial distribution when p is small and n is large that means rare kind of events are there then we approximate binomial distribution by poisson distribution but what will happen when n is very large there is no information about p when p is not given to us we don't have any information about p just we have information that n is very large then we can't go for poisson distribution approximation okay what is that we have to talk about normal approximation so normal means a standard normal uh, distribution we have to approximate it by that okay and uh, there are various scenario are coming here uh, these are for uh, poisson approximation you can now you can see that uh, uh, if you increase keep on increasing n uh, you are not bothering about p you are keep on increasing n what you will see that uh, you will get uh, binomial distribution it will be converted into normal distribution when you keep on increasing uh, number of trial of tossing a coin and you are not focusing on the getting uh, what is the probability of getting a head a probability of success it will take a, a normal distribution it is it is taking a normal distribution okay so here uh, what is that scenario so if that is the situation how will compute the probability how will comp compute probability of binomial distribution with the help of norm normal distribution so consider a binomial distribution uh, having mean having number of trial 100 and probability of success 0 0.5 that means you are uh, 100 time you are tossing a bernoulli coin that fair bernoulli coin you are to uh, uh, tossing n and you are willing to compute probability that x is uh, that uh, uh, success number of success is greater than or equal to 55 how you will compute it so there uh, that very complicated binomial terms would be there you have to come go for that here p is 0 0.5 so you can't go for Poisson distribution. Why? In Poisson distribution, P must be very small. It is P is not a small. So Poisson is failure. So we have to go for normal distribution. So if you know that uh, uh, this one is talking about mean. So how? What is the mean of a binomial random variable? N time P. And what is the variance? N time P into one minus P. One minus P. That we call it Q. Okay. So with the help of that, we will compute uh, mu and this is, this one is mu, call it, and this one is the second one is the variance, variance. So n time p is what? 100 times 0.5 is 50. So you got mu. And and 100 times 0.5 times 0.5. What is that? 25. This one is mu. And this one is sigma square. Okay, so we will estimate the probability that x is observed below greater than or equal to 0.5. How will approximate? So remember that x is a discrete random variable and y is a continuous random variable. Y is observed value in continuous fashion, x is observed value in discrete fashion. If someone is saying that uh, x is greater than or equal to 0.5. Uh, sorry, x is greater than or equal to 55. What is meaning of that? x is greater than or equal to 55. This one, x is a discrete random variable. Then what does it mean? x when uh, x is greater than or equal to 0.5, when y will consider it? If you say that y is greater than or equal to 54.5, then by default it will contain x is greater than or equal to 5. So 0.5 you have to take it uh, uh, left, not right. 
if you are taking right then what will be 55.5 that will not contain 55 okay so that's where you have to talk about here uh, x y is greater than or equal to 54 in order to include 55 and y is a continuous random variable because it is normally distributed okay 54.5 here this kind of so this event x is greater than or equal to 55 is equivalent to y is greater than or equal to 54.5 that calibration that point 0.5 is coming as a calibration so this one is this property that y x is greater than or equal to 55 is approximately equal to y is greater than or equal to 54.5 and what is this property uh, this property if you are willing to what is the complement of this one y is less than or equal to so what is the complement property of this one 1 minus y is less than 54.5 okay and uh, here y is a normally distributed random variable we have to perform a standardization so a standardization how you can perform a standardization so take y divide subtract it from mean of y what is that 50 mean of y is what 50 and divide by a standard deviation of y that means a square root of variance that one is a square root of 25 that one is 5 so this we call it it is actually a standard normal random variable z so if you here you are having y so you have to if you are uh, deviating this kind of thing so you have to subtract 50 both side now so it would be y minus 50 then here this side it would be 54.5 minus 50 then you divide by 5 then here y minus 50 divided by 5 is less than 54.5 minus 50 divided by 5 if you simplify what would be 54.5 minus uh, 50 it would be plus 4 okay okay 4.5 divided by 5 if you simplify it is coming as uh, this becomes uh, y minus 50 divided by 5 it becomes z and this becomes 0.9 okay and this is the value of cdf what is the, at point uh, at point 0 0.9 okay 0 0.9 and this you will get it from the table or uh, this value would be given to you either in the question it this value would be given to you you don't have to remember or normal table would be there you can find the value in the normal table value of pi would be given there starting from 0 1 2 3 4 5 it will go like that in point and decimal then with respect to decimal there would be columns so there would be columns uh, through columns you proceed right word you will get decimal value uh, de for value of pi for those decimal value okay and you may raise a question why not uh, value of uh, negative value of uh, why not pi is having uh, for negative value of z actually phi uh, pdf you have already seen symmetricness pdf of z is symmetric around origin so you can compute if you know uh, phi of z you can compute phi of minus z both are having very interesting relation relation okay and another you can generalize it like this way if someone is asking compute the probability of k successes if you are willing to compute probability of k successes then what you have to do uh, this one is k okay it is a discrete value and if you are willing to approximate it by continuous uh, uh, normal random variable then here you have to deviate it so by 0.5 and you can go for 0 0.3 0 0.1 depends upon your calibration it is not like that in last case i have taken 0 0.5 you can take calibration uh, 0 0.1 0 0.2 depends upon whatever you want to proceed okay so as per that computation would be much more complicated if you are going for much a smaller value it would be much more complicated so if you are computing probability that x is observed value equal to here it is equality is coming here so that's where both side term will come here both side that means k minus 0 0.5 and k plus this right hand point we call it k plus 0 0.5 and the left hand point we call it k minus 0 0.5 okay so here this probability is approximately equal to that y y is a normally distributed random variable that one is observing value between this value and this value okay then what you have to do what is the mean of y it would be the the same mean what the binomial random, random variable is having that one is n time p so 
deviate throughout this term by mean y minus n p that means also you have to subtract from left bound and right bound as well and then divide by a standard deviation of the uh, binomial random variable that one is n time p into 1 minus p and uh, you have to take a square uh, if you are willing to get sigma it would be a square root of sigma square so that is where a square root is coming here so it is coming in term of normal distribution and finally you have to what is this one it is saying that y this one is z this you will call it z so z is taking value between this and uh, between two number call it a and b okay this one is talking about z is observing value between a and b so if i am asking to compute probability that what is the probability that z is observing value between a and b how you will compute it so uh, up to this there is no issue uh, when you say that what is how you will compute that z is suppose uh, you are talking about a and b here b is here so what is the pro this probability uh, that z is observing value between these how you will compute it so when you say that uh, z is less than equal to probability that z is less uh, probability that z is less than equal to b it is saying that you are uh, you have computed probability up to b that means a starting from minus infinity to b but are you bothering about uh, uh, the section of from minus infinity to a you're not so this one is covering probability that from minus infinity to b and but we are focusing on a to b so we have to uh, truncate the extra probability what is the extra probability z is observing value from minus infinity to a minus infinity the extra thing we have to subtract it okay so th that's why this one is the extra thing we have to subtract it and we can get all these value from the normal table otherwise in the question it will be provided okay just so what you have to do you have to simplify all these things k would be given to you n would be given to you p would be given to you just simplify all this and get the numeric value of that and uh, whatever just suppose 0.9 is coming there the value of 0.9 would be given there value of phi of 0.9 would be given to you okay so with this we are just uh, ending uh, which one up to this uh, calculation is fine now so here it would be okay this quantity would be what twice of twice of k twice of yeah twice of k minus 1 minus 2 yeah 2 okay here also 2 will come here if you are taking two, uh, the, in, the denominator two will also come here. So simple calculation. Those are simple calculation. Otherwise, take 0.5. So that would be fine. Okay. And few example, I, I will say, share this slide. Uh, you can compute like this in the similar way. What is the probability that x is observing value uh, greater than or equal to 80? Uh, the normal in the normal table it would be given. Sig mu and sigma would be given to you. And you have to compute. Uh, you just. Uh, x is greater than or equal to 80 means you have to complement it complement it that means 1 minus uh, uh, then what you have to do next you have to asterisk it uh, it would be what x less than 80 so you asterisking it what what it would be x minus 60 then 80 uh, less than or equal to 80 minus 60 and throughout you have to divide it by 20 so what would be this one in the right hand side you will have uh, 20 by 20 and this uh, x minus uh, 60 divided by 20 it becomes z so so that's where z is, this becomes what it is probability that uh, z is observing value up to 20 by 20 and what is 20 by 21 what is the value of probability of uh, value of phi at 1 0.5 it is 0.5 it is at the middle it is the, at the middle so it is value of uh, no, not no. At zero, at zero, actually middle. 
uh, here if you see uh, the a standard normal distribution it is symmetric about origin so 50% right of uh, vertical axis and 50% left of vertical axis so what is value of phi of 0 what is value of phi of 0 phi of 0 means uh, it is talking about probability that z is observing value up to 0 the probability that z is observing value up to 0 50% probability 50% means 0 0.5 Okay, and when someone is saying that what is the value of phi of 1, 1 is what? It is right of 0 and value of phi at point at 0 is 0 0.5. Automatically at 1 value of phi would be greater than 0.5, greater than 0.5. Okay, so that uh, that kind of things you can also in, uh, draw, draw some kind of intuition from the uh, density of uh, normal distribution. Okay. And by, by simplification, you will get this protein. Okay. Further, anyone is having any question? Okay.